Hello and welcome to the Plo Newsroom. Uh, this is episode 8, recorded Wednesday, May 11 in 2020. And you're listening to Philipp Bauer from Munich. And my co-host is... Here I am again, Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. And, and we have a special yes. feature. Yes, you first, me first. <laughs> Continue, Philip, yours, you, yours, you, yours. You, you've seen it ob- probably already. Obviously. We have a third person in the uh, in the news uh, podcast today. Um, hi, Victor. Victor. Um, hi. hi. <laughs> good, good to have you. We we were planning to uh, invite you like half time during the recording, but uh, I don't know uh, timing and technology. So we just started. Uh, let's let's do the whole thing as a threesome, and let's see where where it gets us. So cool. uh, we'll thanks for having me anyway. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be here yeah, with you. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. to continue the introduction things, uh, this podcast is both available in video and audio. If you listen to the audio one, we, I don't think we're doing that much demo this year. Now we've got Vector here. I think we're just going to hear him out for two hours uh, and, and skip the demos for the next time. Uh, we have a small web corner on www.plug.org slash newsroom where you can find links uh, to anything we discuss and we'll add later or all the episodes and links also to the audio uh, version. Philip, subjects. Yeah, we'll talk about what happened in the last couple of weeks. That is Wilplon Day. That is the Beethoven Sprint from where all three of us have returned uh, in the last uh, days. Um, we have a secret topic, which is not secret anymore. That's Victor. Uh, and we'll obviously, as usual, cover events and upcoming sprints and maybe an add-on depending on where we come out with the time. So let's start with the first uh, main subject. That's gonna that was World Plan Day that happened like two weeks ago. It was a uh, twenty-four hour online event on YouTube where we had f- over fifty talks in uh, a billion languages. I don't know, but there were a couple of languages that I don't know, like uh, Hindi, uh, Italian, and Portuguese. That were the ones that I actually didn't understand. Was there something in Dutch? Oh, there was something in Japanese as well. God. So that was pretty, uh, pretty exciting. And a lot of people, uh, thanks to Riku, uh, Riku Pekka and, um, oh, God, who was helping yeah, organize Erico, it? Erico, Erico, our president, yeah. technical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a lot of work as well. I'm just sharing quickly sharing this uh, screen uh, for where you can find uh, World Plone Day. It's on YouTube. Uh, go to the Plone uh, user there, and we have a playlist with World Plone Day, and you can see the full playlist. And there's a lot of nice content here. Yes, yeah, so you're not expected to watch all of them, especially the four-hour-long session of the Italian World Plone Day, or the very long, uh, some other very long ones that I didn't if you don't speak the language obviously but let, let's pick a couple uh, that uh, we we personally uh, think were exciting so my favorite um obviously was the talk by sean kelly because he, he's just ex- really he's a good speaker he knows how to get a even even really complicated subjects across and it still feels like you're in a i don't know excitement in a ride in a theme park or something like that so he talked about uh, plone golf that's what he called it securing the most secure cms it's a great talk and he went through all the loopholes um, that that you can i don't know fall into death traps that you can uh, reach when you have to secure a plone for a government client because they yeah. have a lot of regulations and rules and they do these uh, security audits and these security out audits he discusses how they work what kinds of issues they find and how you can address them i actually took away a lot from that great talk and he dishes it out like a casual thing like oh yeah we did it, a bit of war stories and a bit of, so that was very very entertaining to to watch indeed but I admit I didn't watch them all. I, I scanned through them, and the amazing thing you see with all—you don't realize it because our, our lingua franca is, is a bit like English. Uh, uh, use well, um, when I'm in a Dutch or in a, in a German or, or Dutch, I can, I can switch to those languages. But then still, Romanian, Italian, Brazil, uh, Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese. Finish. I finish. I don't understand them. I, I want to know what's happening there. Why? <laughs> and, and, and you and you you go back to your childhood where you saw things on the te- on the telly uh, uh, and you didn't really understand the words. Like I can't remember it, but it feels like this. Like I'm watching only pictures now, and it's so so interesting. Yeah, and they, 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 if they do screen shares. You say, is this something I really want to know that I need to learn? And um, you, well, 
Yeah. Mm. The language barrier is there, yeah. but I'm excited that they there are a lot of uh, native language uh, for native speakers of whichever language uh, talks during World Plan Day. So I, I really like that. Uh, another one that um, I'm just picking the easy one uh, that stood out was the Plonconf introduction video for uh, Namur in Belgium, uh, where they had these this gi a giant golden turtle, and they had the same group of people uh, standing on a bridge. B bridges are obviously a thing with Plon conferences, uh, <laughs> where they said, uh, and we have beers, and we have more beers. And we have even more beers, and they have these huge number of beers that obviously are uh, the main attraction of Belgium. Maybe there's more. Let's find out and go there. So wh yeah. what was interesting for you? So f for me, uh, uh, we should skip. Uh, we did our old small part there, Philip. So you did some more about uh, uh, collective export import 2.6 uh, support. I did an introduction on collective export import. I think Victor did his share as well, so I'm coming by. Uh, um, so for me, uh, a, a favorite was uh, uh, the photo add-on stuff uh, 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 from EEA, which Mio and Grigore did, which was in Romanian. So I, I recognized two words of French and four words that looked like a German word. And then, but it's just nice as, as a kind of carousel, seeing all those add-ons they made for for their client uh, uh, going by. Uh, the classic UI mockup uh, by Mike uh, was was uh, uh, very interesting to just see. It f also, I think for others maybe to see well, like what's coming up on the classic UI part uh, in Plan Six because he gives a very good introduction. What we indeed changed on the on the theming part and on the on the on the bootstrap what's added on on module federation on JavaScript what we're working on. Um, I, 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 I'm, I should not say this, but uh, our two release managers chatting along and, and bringing up histories of doing strange relations. I, I was almost looking back at the Muppet show with Stutler and Waldorf sitting in the balcony commenting, but actually these are the guys that are doing the work. Uh, so that was that was entertaining uh, to see Moritz and, and Eric chat on on the generic uh, on, on uh, what happens uh, when you make a plone release and what what's all to do with it and how it maybe changed over the years and what what kind of work it is and it really shows off what what shows really shows what in the back end uh, uh, or, or not in the back end because we have a back end and front end now but in what happens what what, we, what needs to be done for every plan release so very uh, very good to to watch that that one as well i, I also like that there were uh, th there was an uh, south african um presentation you you heard that because there was one person who always said yeah as like yeah which is <laughs> very Seca south Vietnam. african uh, I really like uh, the the approach that they did, like the Q and A uh, thing. So y you should really watch that. And just seeing or hear and hearing new people that you don't see often at sprints because the community is global. But these sprints, obviously, people don't travel around the whole world to come to to one sprint, and sometimes not to a conference. So it's uh, good to see no. new faces. So v Victor, uh, did anything stood out stand out for you during the Plan Day? Well, uh, a lot of things. Uh, I, uh, yeah, as I, I could only skim through them briefly. <laughs> yeah, or never didn't uh, uh, watch uh, all of them. But I think that they were uh, quite entertaining. I mean, because they covered the things that are moving now in the community, and that's a lot. Of, uh, that's a lot of that, and it's very important, like the documentation update, or, or yeah, the, the thing, things like that, the containers. I very I love the containers one also uh, to be honest. Also the migrations, yeah, and migrations and the export import. I think it's super important, yeah, have in the times to come to have that in mind and how to do it properly. Yeah, a lot of uh, n very nice content. Yeah, so yeah, I, I remember uh, the first World Plon days were always in in in, in lo on location events. We actually had a villa in Munich rented once. Uh, where we gave out uh, CDs with the installer of Plone. So there was not, there was, yeah, there was the installer, not a virtual machine on it. And uh, the, the wife of, uh, of um, my, my former partner in the company, she switched the CDs by accident. So uh, everyone got a Samba CD uh, <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> uh, so we printed labels and we gave out these CDs and people tested them. And there was no plone, there was Samba. So <laughs> as a, as a um, uh, to, to, to give back, uh, I don't know, to, to make good on that, um, 
the year later in the same location, we actually did a samba, samba performance. She she's a samba dancer, so that was that was weird. Oh, that actually, was samba. I was I was thinking about the file sharing. Uh, no, 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 uh, Open no. source solution. And no, I was thinking no. like well, M- music file. and dance. <laughs> that's, okay. See, that's samba. Okay, thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Talking about singing and dancing. So that was no no Old singing, in, just dancing, yeah, just collective dancing. dancing. That was yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, I, I, it was it was interesting, and, and what 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 Victor says, uh, uh, there are some some par- parts now moving, especially the container uh, that we we kind of admit uh, uh, to ourselves as a community that we should also jump on this container uh, uh, train uh, uh, by now. I mean, we've had we've had in, in, in the first ten years it was almost like that nothing was there, so we invented a lot of things uh, uh, coming also from Python and, and SOAP. Then we got bitten by that, and we were a bit too maybe too afraid to to invent our own things that got cut down again by something way bigger that implemented in the correct way. And now we've seen it with with containers that that's the the, the gold standard for deployment and also for testing and other things uh, uh, which are now coming up, which uh, which will be very important for for the new Plone version as well. Yeah, there there will be a lot of documentation and hopefully also talks on that topic uh, in the future so that everybody's on board with that. So oh, I like I like documentation. Sorry, one quick thing. I like the the the, the quickies, the the the, the plone shorts. There were f- yeah, plone Jens shorts in there. Jens did Jens, these. We should. Jens that's Klein really from Austria. There was yeah. uh, three really interesting technical topics. Yeah. I hate XML based uh, schemas for content types, but that was really helpful. And nevertheless. And yes, uh, one from uh, adding a custom collection criteria, which was a. a, 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 a Quite uh, a heatly, uh, heated discussion topic on communityplone.org with people trying to add a, add a criteria. So now we can just we, we that's something that's a that's something we should really expand on the plone shorts. Yeah, that's good. So let's move to the next topic. Um, so um, that was a virtual event, but with the pandemic at least taking a break during the uh, summer season. Let's see what happens in autumn. Um, in place, uh, in on location, on premise uh, events are actually happening. So there was a sprint, uh, and we were all in Bonn. We met for the Beethoven sprint, and since we wanted to talk about that, we wanted to step back a little and talk about sprints in general because uh, maybe uh, some of our listeners know about sprints, but uh, not everyone. So, what's a sprint? What's it good for? Um, so what, what, what do you say? Uh, Philip, Philip, what do you tell your customer uh, when you said, look, I've, I'm away for a week uh, uh, and I can, I can help you next week again unless it's very urgent? <laughs> that's, the, that's the explanation we should give now. Oh, yeah, all my clients know that because uh, I, I love going on sprints. I go there uh, go frequently and I tell them that I'm working on the project that they're using and it will be better in the future for that. And that's why they can't read for me unless it's really important for that week. Yeah. So the, the big summary, let, I'll start off. So a sprint is just uh, people from from the Plone community or any other software community come together for a while phys- on a physical place to talk together, to discuss, to program, develop together. Uh, uh, and to have fun in the evening and maybe visit something and also the social aspect is very important and that's exactly what we've missed for the uh, uh, for the last two years of course interesting maybe for a bit of history don't confuse it with a uh, sprint in the agile development uh, yeah that's what I'm coming to mention it's coming it's coming from uh, actually I think sprint it was coined by someone in the Python community like over 15 years ago and then it was adapted and it got into the whole agile development method where you indeed say look you can't be developing Developing with all people all the time, uh, especially not when you start uh, also are, are, are working remote or you have, uh, especially you have people from different expertise domains coming in. Let's focus work on for a, a short while, one or two weeks, with a fixed uh, a list of subjects or topics or, or use cases or whatever. Then you close it off, and then you, after that you've got like uh, another one or two weeks where you can do some testing, where you can discuss with uh, uh, the, the product owner or whoever has this rule. Then uh, also users in the organization or organizations who want to start using the software can test the version that was kind of then yeah, finished. We don't want to explain how. how Agile development works. No, no, no. But it's but it's and, and then after that you say okay, look and continue, and that's the original meaning of a sprint. I I, I actually don't know about the history of that. No, I, but I that's heard done. that it's uh, related to the Zoop and Python communities, uh, like many things, daytime for example, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's just 
people coming coming together uh, in the Plone community, working on Plone, and obviously yeah. on many other projects as well. Yeah. So what, what, got what I think is is the most important thing is the coming together, the together part of that, because um, we we all often we work uh, alone on on open source on Plone itself. But the sprint aspect, when you come together, uh, it, it's really about the working together and achieving something together. And even before that, um, figuring out what the common goal is that you want to reach together. So by together, I mean you do pair programming. You discuss the shit out of uh, topics unless you, until you can't hear it anymore. And you, uh, you try to find a common um, a common ground for a technical or even organizational questions. There were sprints that were not related to code at all. They were related to documentation, to, for example, the contributors agreement of Plone and stuff like that. All these topics are discussed at sprints. So, yeah, from taking from that, uh, it is. It is. You don't have to be a developer to go to a sprint. You don't have to. You don't even have to know Python. You don't even have to know Plone to be at a sprint, uh, unless if you. The most important thing is that you're interested in achieving something together. And if it's writing documentation, testing features, discussing future features, or um, figuring out what's going to be in the new versions of Plone uh, from a a uh, user's perspective or a uh, developer's perspective, depending on where you are, uh, that is great. And it's also, what you said, uh, also depending on, on the level of, of people is also not important. Sometimes it's, it's even better to have some people that are not already uh, afflicted with the curse of knowledge on a certain problem to make because they already know what's is. And especially when you start writing or improving documentation or other things, it's it's very, very difficult if you have been using a program or an application or whatever system for 10 years and then you want to write an introductory uh, 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 manual or getting started for newbies. You can't do that without a, a, a newbie in the best sense of the word because that person will exactly tell you what they don't know and will say, look, but this is wrong, this is wrong. What do you mean? Uh, uh, okay, I've always been doing... Is, do you, uh, oh, uh, do, do you mean this with Samba? No, sorry, it's not a file sharing thing. Ah, okay. And, and, and and then, I mean, that's a simple, but as a, if you are already in, deep into the software and you know what you're using, it's, it's almost impossible to do that. And that, for that, you need uh, uh, all these uh, uh, different kinds of, of, of people with different kinds of experiences and also expectations uh, on the sprint. So um, during the sprint <coughs> in, in Bonn, we had uh, lots of discussions, but uh, one, one stood out, uh, stands out for me uh, in, in hindsight was about how decisions are made, because it's always like who's, who's doing what, whose responsibly, responsibility is what, and uh, something I, uh, I think is really important to, for, for people who are just joining the Plone community to understand is how, it, how decisions are made, because Plone is, or is said to be a duocracy, uh, that means if you do something, um, this is it? No, that's not it. If you do something, there is a, uh, there's a chance that the, uh, the action that you're taking is adopted by the communi community. And the people who are actually developing Plone are, are the people who are making these decisions. But there is not for everything there not for everything there is a fixed structure so these discussions and the ideas where plone should go in uh, in the future are very often taking place and starting at sprints and uh, the more important the decisions are for example when we we discussed for actually two years which kind which front end we should use uh, which framework we should use for the uh, future front end uh, and we discussed for a couple of years uh, how we should uh, proceed w uh, with regards to ZOAP since it wasn't ported to Python 3 yet and if we should try to write a new different backend or, or uh, div um, port ZOAP ourselves and so on. Uh, so all these discussions happen at conferences, uh, at sprints, are taken to conferences, to bigger settings, are ta also taken into the online sphere. But if you really want to take part in that and have a say and not, not only, I don't know, uh, write an angry blog post uh, afterwards, it is a good idea to go to the Plone community to have your voice actually heard because it's, it's, it's not about who's shouting the loud, loudest, it's about who's there, who's doing work, and who's taking part in a discussion.
Yeah, and, and I, to extend that, it's it's a democracy, but it's also doing doing things together. And that we should, I've already thought played with the thought, Philip. We should do a separate podcast about this subject. But the, uh, you've got open source, and you've got open source, and there are man, nowadays many open source uh, 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 systems and so-called communities where there's actually a commercial company behind it as the venture capital or the backer that that kind of at the end says, okay, look, but we're going that direction. And then you can pretend like there are a lot of people involved in it, or you get a, a split again. But Plone from the beginning has been a foundation, and there has not been a single leader or a single company deciding uh, uh, which things to do. And those are exactly uh, created at, at sprints, at conferences, at other meetings, uh, where people start doing work, start discussing things together. Uh, and then you do things together and discuss further, and you come up with something. The downside, of course, is that things move more slowly in, in such a kind of organization than when you have a a benevolent dictator for life. Obviously, who, who, you, you need to create to do some that. kind and of consensus. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like everybody is totally on board with that, but the feeling of uh, a consensus in the community always was there for any kind of important decision that yeah. we made. So, a bit of the introduction. How do you organize a sprint, Philip? Well, you uh, you just do it. You say, I'm um, going to have a sprint. Uh, that's, yeah. that's about it. And you invite people, and they come, and they do some work. If you uh, if you want funding, there is a form on Plone.org. It's uh, Plone.org slash foundation slash event dash sponsoring. Uh, yeah. And yeah. there you can you can you can get actually quite a lot of money for a uh, if if you, the topic you're working on is strategically important like Volto the new front end or the Python three porting stuff, uh, but also other things uh, that yeah. are important. So we could now for the next two hours uh, 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 get up memories from uh, all the sprints that we visited or what stories uh, we've heard uh, about of say, Bluetooth. Fred, what was your first sprint? Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you. I've been pondering that for like the last 10, 15 minutes because I was asking to ask it to Victor, and I thought, no, I can't do that because then he will be just as flabbergasted as I am. I don't know. 2000. I, I mean, I know my first loan conference was 2004, so we did some sprinting there. That was the second. Uh, uh, um, I remember really sprinting and really feeling up to doing some stuff at Budapest in Hungary in 2009. So somewhere between 2004 and 2009... Uh, 2007, was there already a Sorrento thing where I went to? No, because then I started working at CEST. So somewhere 2007, 2009, I, I, I can't really remember. Victor, I've given you some time. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> yeah, be, exactly. to be honest, I don't remember. Oh, I, I mean, I, I, I used, uh, I've been in Bonn Conference since uh, Seattle, since 2006, but to be honest, I was far too shy and... and and uh, w one of the things that often happens is that things think, uh, people think that they are not uh, enough skilled to go to such a uh, event, but that's not actually not true. You, you already you already talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. So any profile, any skill uh, is uh, valuable in on a sprint documentation uh, design. Uh, yeah, even even just user experience and, and talk about your own experience and, and be able to contribute with that. But, and I don't know, to be honest, it should have been some, some conference, maybe, yeah, maybe Budapest or... Yeah, yeah. exactly. Philip, your mm. turn. Uh, yeah, um, Date yeah, time. I, I, I missed the sprint <laughs> in, in, uh, in Washington, but that was actually not my first. My first was in Munich. Uh, by the pl uh, by the user group because the user group is uh, what lured me into the Plone community and we did a small sprint on a, a, a German speaking Plone DE website uh, the very first iteration of that I think we just met for a weekend just four of us there was no funding we just get got some it was Munich we got some white sausages obviously and <laughs> had beer in the morning. I, no, this is not appropriate in other parts of the world, but in Germany sometimes you do that. Uh, so that was my first sprint. But the uh, then again, a conference sprint was the big one. Um, after Washington, there was probably Budapest, uh, yeah, where we did the uh, the 
blown for migrating of add-ons. I think that was yep. the main topic, and we I actually took part in that and ported a couple of add-ons. So yeah, we, we used to have a, a small sprint here in the Netherlands just to do the translations for every upcoming new major plone release. We just got some people from some uh, uh, different companies together, sat down, ordered pizza, and started typing away at the PO files uh, for a few hours, <laughs> and then we were done again. And it was fun seeing each other, and we had our translations uh, done again. Yeah. So if if you're thinking about, if you're listening to this and thinking about, I should go to a conference because then I can c come to a sprint. Uh, that is true, and that's like an entry drug maybe. But um, a, a dedicated sprint is something more intimate. It's much better in my experience because conferences, uh, people are already uh, super, uh, I don't know, worn out maybe from five days of conferencing and training. And uh, they're very stressful because there's like maybe 100 people working on 20 different topics and it's pretty, it's, it's like an anthill. Uh, whereas a, a local uh, sprint where maybe 20 people attend is you get to know people much better. You can have, you have more time because the conference sprint is a maximum of two days. And some of the, uh, like in Bonn, we were there for five, third, four, four nights at least, five days. So that was... Um, mm. You get the f the full experience with a, uh, with and, a and the local sprints sprint. have have a bit more uh, also sightseeing tourism uh, uh, checking the local surroundings. I mean, I still have to bring my family to Sorrento a uh, time, even though maybe the location will no longer be be uh, strategically available to us. Uh, but that was been a wonderful thing. Uh, uh, the the, the Bushenshank sprint, which I unfortunately can't attend, but that's also an, an area I really would like to, f to see of Austria. Uh, uh, I, should, I should go back to Barcelona again. We've had a conference there, uh, but we should uh, have sprints there again as well, just for Barcelona. Um, and that, that's also the, the charming part of, of, of the local sprints. Uh, Alpine City Sprint, I'm forgetting. Uh, we had the nicest excursions there uh, uh, as well. Even on, on the exactly on the year I didn't go, we, they went to a space center in, in thing and a tunnel uh, 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 thingy that they're now building across Europe, where I thought, like, oh, I should have seen that yeah, next time. <laughs> But the craziest stories are always at the sprints where you didn't go, uh, like yeah. the, the uh, Chupino sprint. I heard weird things about that sprint and yeah. the Apilago sprint and stuff. Yeah, pe people know what I'm talking about. If you were there, you probably know. So I yeah. wasn't there, so I can only speculate how yeah. uh, amazing that actually was. Let's let's move on. Yeah, our main feature, Philip. Yeah, um, Victor. Victor, of course. <laughs> tell, tell, us, tell us about what, what did we do in Bonn? I can't remember. I, the last evening we went to uh, how many pubs? Four? I can't remember. Like It got a bit fuzzy uh, in the end. So um, that evening uh, ruined most of my memories from the whole week. Um, can, can you tell us um, what the sprint, uh, the Beethoven sprint was focusing on and what, what was uh, done? Uh, what were the main topics? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, the Beethoven Sprint had one uh, main topic which was uh, prepare the version that was going to be shipped with, uh, that is going to be shipped with Plone 6, uh, especially the Volta version, the UI for Plone 6. And um, we only had, in, in fact, one blocker for that version. Uh, is what we are calling now Volta 16, is the upcoming major version of Volta. And it's major because it, it will contain a um, uh, breaking change, and this is, this is mainly this blocker that, that we're uh, concerning us is that through the last years we, we, we've been seeing we, we, we've been seeing that uh, the default rich editor that we were using was kind of stuck. I mean, it, it was uh, it, it, it's, it was uh, it, it is um, called Trache, yes, uh, probably. Uh, some of you, you you know about the, about it. Uh, it was maintained, uh, created and maintained by Facebook. It was completely uh, abandoned by them uh, for now. Yeah, some some years ago uh, that happened, and then we knew that we we should uh, move move on and find another solution. There were also uh, some tricky things, to, uh, some tricky ways to extend it, and we wanted to improve that that uh, use that developer experience. I mean, the DraftJS was a little bit yeah uh, difficult, and the weight of extending it and to add new features was was kind of yeah meh. 
and uh, yeah, the EA, EA, the other web uh, folks started to um, experiment with Slate some years ago, and he developed an amazing add-on through the through these years, which is uh, Volta Slate. And somehow we decided, we, we knew at some point uh, that we should move on and, uh, and migrate to Slate. And this is what we've been using, uh, we've been doing last year, uh, with what we've been using in our projects also. And the last, this was the last blocker, so put uh, Slate in core, in Vault core, and remove Drag.js from it. Uh, and this was the the main blocker for, for Plone 6 to happen, uh, make this final change. And we've been working on it during the sprint, especially Rasvan Miu and Tiberio Ikim has been working on it. Uh, they, they have been working on it. And um, uh, so far so good. Uh, we have already a working version. There's a PR going on. Uh, I, yeah, I, it's on review. Uh, yeah, there are some things to be polished still, but it looks already great. So we are, yeah, uh, mm. about to fulfill that, and uh, yeah, ready to continue. Yeah, just yep. to clarify for people, you can you can for the last one or two years you could already just start Volto with the Slate add-on there. It's just an an add-on now which you answer a few questions when you scaffold it uh, uh, using the Jeroman generator. Uh, but the thing is, of course, people will, because Volto is already underway now, like four and a half, five years maybe, and you've created already all kinds of projects with those. And those first projects all use DraftJS. So when you would now say, look, make it the default, then those projects will break. And I think that's also the the work you've been doing now, which is like like having really this split and then move it to core when now of course the photo add-on story is also uh, much brighter and easier with mrs developer and the uh, and the things there where you can you can really add add-ons so it's it the, all the, the last demos I, I started also with previous podcasts i always when i start a photo instance i just said yes add a photo uh, uh, photo slate uh, minimal default tables but it's, it's on the main read, read me of the uh, of the of the uh, uh, photo slate repository yeah, also one of the things that also uh, were important and, and yeah, thanks Philip for working on that also is, is the, the migration, uh, not only from HTML, that uh, because if we come from old uh, plone sites, uh, the, that, that they, uh, depending on TinyMC HTML, then we have to move all this HTML to, uh, in this case, this late, this late format, which is uh, more, uh, compl it's, it's JSON based. And we are also been doing that uh, during the spring, uh, polishing here and there um, uh, to have a complete story for going not only from HTML Plone uh, 5 or 4 uh, or previous versions of Plone based on TinyMCE, but also from DriveJS because it uh, could be that some people already jump into Volta and we need this transition also to go from DriveJS to Slate. Yeah, and this is not something Volta specific. We've had the same. I've had this experience the same with Tiny MCE. Uh, when you move Tiny MCE from uh, with with uh, classic Plon site, what we had from from Plone four to Plone five, then there are also some subtle distances where there's already migration code available and it's triggered uh, in export import, but also in the in the existing uh, 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 in place migration. I mean, the web the web evolves and it evolves uh, way quicker uh, uh, than I think we were used to in in the in the early days. And that's exactly to, to get back, yeah, Draft.js was like the best thing to happen like four, four years ago, but because JavaScript is like moving, the, the whole ecosystem is like moving three times as fast as all the existing programming languages, after two years, uh, the, the best add-on you could pick is suddenly obsolete or replaced by something uh, uh, much slicker and gets a lot more traction. And yeah, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid something we'll have to get used to as, 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 as uh, uh, Python developers. <laughs> It's. I, th I think w w it's not a, a uh, target uh, that is approachable where we have a stable system at some point. Uh, two years from then, uh, when Plon 6 is released, we're going to have Plon 7 and probably a new editor and different uh, blocks and new migration uh, issues. Uh, I very often work on migrations, all kinds of stuff, and now suddenly we have to move JSON from one w format to another format. Um, it's, well, it's the world we live in, so that's yeah, yeah, yeah. what can we expect. So, so qu next, uh, next question. Um, 
So w what's a personal highlight from that sprint in Bonn? I, I can tell you mine. It was uh, the vegan uh, döner, which is like a kebab <laughs> thing. I really liked that. And I had an IPA that really tasted like mango juice, even though there was no mango and no juice involved. It was real IPA. That was great. Uh, I but didn't it, see that it, it one could coming. Be something, <laughs> it obviously could be something uh, code-related, if your highlights. Yeah, no, I also love that tuna. Uh, but we usually uh, go half this stop during the spring. We always go to this place because we know that it's good and, and we all love it. But, yeah, highlights, yeah, uh, get together again. I mean, I think it's the most important thing. Uh, And we underestimate how important sprints are. You already uh, talk, uh, talk about it and explain about it, but it's really difficult to r get the real grasp of what means to get together again with uh, not only colleagues, but also friends, because uh, over the years you, you, you used, uh, I mean, you, you managed to get friends of, of these colleagues and, and see them again, uh, having, as you said, <laughs> see people in 3D again uh, and, and share the same room and, and yeah, I get together again and work together again. It was, it was amazing, yeah, for me. Yeah, the, the, um, so far, we, we took, everyone took a, uh, a COVID test every day and they were all green, uh, hopefully same as the Jenkins tests. Uh, <laughs> let's hope that it stays this way in the next couple of sprints. Well, they didn't, what, what they didn't with the full thread? GitHub Actions. They didn't with the GitHub Actions. So, uh, uh, highlight. Um, the, uh, so, real cool. I, I've got like three or four. One to second what we just said. Uh, I was able to explain one of my too long emails to somebody on the discussion we already have been having for uh, quite some time now on the image handling. And just by showing him my email and explaining a bit, then it clicked for him like in five minutes. When before he was, oh no, another long uh, two a a four uh, emails. Uh, from Fred, I'll, I'll, I'll save that for later. Uh, when it was actually, it was really on the subject, but I can't blame people for ignoring my emails when they're too long, but they're difficult subjects and you want to, to, to explain it to people. And that's exactly getting together 3D. Uh, I accepted the kebab. I had a banana flavored beer uh, when <laughs> where people frowned upon and I just <laughs> safely uh, uh, stick to the Flatsburgers one evening. Um, uh, personal highlights. Um, oh, the uh, container stuff, container stuff. We had a very nice discussion. So I'm, I'm a very, I'm an analytical, very strong, but I'm a really lousy developer and a bit of a, an okay sysadmin. Um, and we had this discussion where I just asked some people, okay, but Erico, if you can now create, Erico has created now like the new front frontend and backend containers that we're going to use everywhere. And I said, Erico, can we do nightlies of those and, and use the latest uh, green core dev build out? And he was like, in his Brazilian, Portuguese, uh, uh, English, and he was like, mm, yeah, yeah, we can do. We can. I said, now we can just test Volto, Volto main and, and Cordev main, and then we'll have like green lights and alerts whenever something breaks on both sides. And people were suddenly like, and I was like, Why didn't you come up with that before? I mean, I'm not the developer. I'm only just, just and that's, those are those, those, those tiny things where somebody makes a small remark, somebody else uh, the, suddenly, uh, 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 no, I would say a bulb, but nowadays a LED flashes on. And, and then people, and, and suddenly there's like, oh, but we've, we've actually, we've already got all this stuff. And it's like also brainstorming that happens at such a time. So in a few days, uh, uh, we will probably, we'll have nightly, uh, uh, like, like Maritz already has been uh, building like weekly uh, uh, um, dev uh, uh, things of the, of the build-out core dev or new plone versions. We're also going to move it to containers. And I think that that's one of the highlights because that will enable so much more things. Uh, also to mention, Erico has added a new container now for all code analysis and things, which will also start running from, from containers. Containers. Yeah, it's all come out of that sprint. That was exciting. And a lot of stuff was worked on. Uh, let's not get into the image uh, scaling thing. That, that discussion <laughs> would, no, no, uh, no, no, no. would ruin our yeah. f time uh, schedule completely. Time left, yeah. No, don't do let's, that. Let's move. Um, so we, we worked on uh, Volto 16. Um, is it? There is an alpha version. When there, when's there going to be a like a real thing? When's uh, mm. Slate going to be merged and done? I... Yeah, I already cut two versions, so we are on Alpha 1, Volta 16.0.0, uh, Alpha 1. Uh, it's not still late in there, as we said uh, before, the PR is still on reviewing. 
Uh, but uh, I expect that it will be it will land soon in master. Then then we can have a release uh, right away, so we all can start um, testing it. Uh, what to expect when this happens? Mm, the people that we were using already Voltus Slate, they, they they just will have to remove the add-on from from their builds, and that's it because Voltus uh, will have it by default. Uh, what else in, is on on stage? Uh, we are uh, we were actively working uh, with uh, uh, some people with uh, the new style wrapper for blocks that will allow us to be more flexible when styling a group a block or, or a group of blocks even and applying uh, injecting being able to inject uh, classes so then afterwards you can you can add styles uh to these to these blocks like i don't know mainly uh yeah uh layout positioning uh background color um i don't know whatever you you can imagine yeah, yeah it's also are... it's also part of Quanta, right? The whole the whole the blocks also with having every block having a, a, a menu bar, or is that still is that divided from this? Is that separate from it, this? It's divided from it. So, so ah, okay. th- th- this is the internal. So in fact, it's not enabled in the stock blocks, and it will only be the the now it's merged the 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 facility to to work with this, right? So. So you could uh, enable it or not in your blocks and be able to access to this styling uh, panel in the sidebar where you could add all the widgets that you think that a block can have, right? For example, yeah, a widget for a, a background color, a widget for, a, I don't know, a border or, yeah, whatever, however, whatever you can imagine, it can be done and it can be put in this new styling uh, uh, sidebar uh, widget that we will have. And um, yeah, but for now it's only the the facility to make this happen. Not not will be enabled in the stock blocks for now. Mm. Uh, yeah, and I think this is remarkable to say. We also been working in polishing here and there. I mean, basically, works and, and polish, works polish all the time. And uh, we managed to merge already some things that they are in in the Alpha Zero. Uh, nice things. I have to say some some of the uh, long wish that we have. Uh, yeah, some, uh, for example, the base view is on its way, something that uh, was in the wish list for a long time. So if you uh, develop a content type that doesn't have a view yet, uh, then you can have this basic view that you access this content type, then you see order at all the fields that it have and the values that it contains. So yeah, I mean, it's, eventually it's, always you're going to develop a view for that, but, but it's really developer convenience. It's developer convenience. When you start a new exactly. content type, you can see what's there. And then indeed after later on, you say, you go to the customer, say, okay, look for this new content type, how should the layout be? And then you develop it. But for the time being, you can actually see it. And it's just, uh, it's iterating over this, it's iterating over the schema and, and doing, uh, uh, showing all the fields in their, in their view position. Yeah, well, yeah. I, was pre- I was pressing for that because I actually have a use case where I don't need a custom view. Uh, the Plone Org website has a content type for foundation member, if you're a Plone Foundation member, and these don't need a view because it's administrative data, basically, where you uh, have a workflow where you can renew your membership. Uh, and um, this is – it's the, the default view or the base view is uh, – I think at, at least at the first step is totally enough for that. You just see yeah, the data. Yeah, a good one. Yeah. 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 And in, if you develop applications, like not fancy super websites, but some data is just application data, just visualizing the data is enough. It doesn't have to be, a, you're not selling stuff sometimes, you're just showing information. So the base view is a good place to start there. So yep. um, since we're already looking into the future, like when can we get Volvo 16? And I heard you <laughs> didn't give a date, but I, I totally get that. Um, <laughs> so let's look into the future. Some, some uh, since you're the mastermind and s- s- like the visionary behind uh, Volvo, and um, what do you think is in store for us if when it comes to Volvo 17, 20, 30, maybe 50? Uh, like in the next couple of years, is there anything Philip, that, that you Philip. want to show? Did you look? Did you look at this presentation at PlonConf last year? <laughs> yeah, there was Quanta, 
But um, it, it, he didn't mention specifically what's going to be in Volta 30. I want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you don't you don't have a release manager as colleague, do you? I've been trying this with Maurits for years. And yeah, it, does, you, it never you works. Don't get an, but uh, kind of, what what's what's the idea here? For example, I don't know since if so. One thing that I I would say if I were in your shoes, like the 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 man who's responsible for a lot that has to do with Volta, is say this is not only the default front end, this is the front end. And in, I don't know, four or five years' time, when every project has moved to that front end, we obviously can still use old version, we will cut uh, server-side uh, rendering from, from the back end. There's obviously not a change in Volto, but that would require Volto to have user interfaces and features that are 100% feature equivalent, plus X, obviously, uh, to what Plown uh, Classic is. Something I would say if I try <laughs> to sell that. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. We, just we just say just say yes, Victor, and then we can move to the next subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I mean we have a lot of ideas in store, and we have the great treasure because yeah, remember, I mean we have a great treasure in uh, that Albert Casado is uh, working uh, from time to time into bringing new things, and some a couple of years ago he came to me and and he delivered me this amazing thing which is quanta and unfortunately i mean quanta is huge enough uh, to um, to be daunting uh, just by stars because we were basically changing everything uh not the basis but but the the, the entire look and feel the fields the layouts uh, blah blah and uh yeah just implementing that is 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 going to take some time and also uh, implementing Quanta right now sh wouldn't have been uh, the, the brightest idea because now we have to focus on uh, shipping what we have and that's why we, we've been working five years and this is the, the so uh, Bolto as we know it now is what is going to be prone six and it has been through the last years right so uh, making the change now shouldn't be uh, that um, yeah, uh, wise, I'd say, because yeah, the, the breaking change will have been too much for the existing sites and, and for Plum 6 itself. So Plum, Plum 6 is going to be Pastanaga and the old good, no, uh, yeah, Volto that we all know now. But of course, once we we cut to Volto 16 and we say that Volto 16 is going to be the LTS version, so that means that we are not going to introduce heartbreaking changes into that just to be sure that people can rely on this version for building their site so so that's very important and that's what uh, it matches with the the mission and vision of of Plone itself that we should stick uh, to a stable and reliable version uh, once Plone 6 is out and that will be Volta 16 and we should ensure that this uh, this is true for the uh, yeah very the, the, the time span that the LTS is going to run, right? From Volta 17, we have a lot of a lot of uh, ideas, starting with Quanta, of course. So, so we could uh, imagine that some of the nice things that we have uh, in Quanta start landing. We cannot overdo all Quanta at the same time. That we know. Uh, but we can go in small steps, right? So I don't know. One of the things that we uh, like the most, that it will be a, 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 a game changer, is the toolbar, right? Quanta toolbar, this unified toolbar that uh, uh, that Albert envisioned that will be in every block. Then from there you can uh, issue all the uh, actions and and you can configure the settings on the block itself for every block. Um, then continuing with all the niceties and, and look and feel changes for Quanta itself. Then one of the things that uh, we have also uh, in the wish list is that we realized, and we had a talk in the sprint about, about this, we had a discussion, that we realized that the architecture for Volto is getting old and the React uh, ecosystem is moving fast. I mean, it's one of the things that the JavaScript world has, right? That you wait or you idle for five uh, seconds and then it changes. 
then, yeah, our reactive team is out. Uh, there are going to be a lot of niceties in the next uh, versions of reactive team, uh, including the server-side rendering uh, suspense support, and that will be a game changer enough. And we are a big consumers of the uh, server-side render because of CO. Basically, in a content management system, this is the most important part for um, to have in, into account for CO. And uh, yeah, modernize the stack is is one of the main priorities. Uh, that will be a breaking change at yeah, of some sorts. Uh, and we should address it after uh, after Plone, Plone 6 is out. Uh, yeah, we had a long list of things that we want to uh, upgrade and make, uh, and all these things to revolve into a better uh, developer experience, right? And yeah, uh, we think that the suspense story is enough big to, to uh, enable it in, in Volto and being making all the developers uh, enjoy and, and uh, enjoy it and, and develop with it. Uh, yeah, and a lot, a, lot of, a lot of ideas that are there. But that will happen from 17 on. And yeah, we'll see. We will need help now that I want it. So, so if anybody is interested in any of these topics, then, then we should go for it uh, yeah. and, and, and jump in. Yeah. So uh, the already, what I, what I find fascinating about now the separation with with a separate front end and the REST API in between is that you can actually you, you can still customize. I mean, you can create block style with a toolbar. That's that's uh, that's already there. Already Slate is doing it. Other, but the thing is like okay, moving those convenience functions over to the core system later. But then once you have a have a have a Plone six with a Volto LTS packaged in that whole what we call Plone six also for marketing. And for, for showing people what, what Plant 6 is all about. You can still add your own blocks and your customizations and build on those LTS versions of Plant 6 plus your own things and wait out until the next LTS version comes out where more lessons learned from others doing the same things uh, with blocks and some infrastructure is moving also in there. So I see that what I had with, with, with for example, with, with what we had now so far with Plant 4 to 5 and 5 to 6, then we had this devilish uh, thing with Plone 5.0 to 5.1. Oh, it's a kind of semantic versioning. It shouldn't really break, but because it was too long, we still broke things in Plone 5.0 to 5.1 because it was one huge system intertwined with server-side rendering, with the middle, with the business logic, with the theming, with the back end and the storage. It was all the same thing. And I really see uh, 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 some some light here with uh, with when you do uh, photo development. You can st it's, it's, I mean, it's obvious a lot of work when you build a site with Photo 8, uh, uh, one of the companies that have been, been doing this already for a long time, but you build Photo 8 and you have to move to Photo 13 or 14. But once we get to this 1.0, I think it looks rather bright that you c it's easier to, with smaller steps, to, to extend your site and you've got this nice separation between front end and back end and you've got this nice separation with the blocks layout where you can add your custom blocks where what your customers ask, yeah, I want to change this small thing on a page, you say, okay, let's use the block for that. Yeah, and we also have this, um, this amazing add-on story that we built over these years and that will allow us also to, if necessary, to backport things. So, so we are not... I mean, where, when I talk about breaking change, the slate uh, change will be a breaking change because you are changing the underlying structure of the data that, has been, that is being saved. But when I, I'm talking about from now on, I think that the good thing will be that from the backend and the data, uh, we will be quite safe from now on because we, are, we don't need anything uh, change to make all these uh, these uh, upgrades and improvements in in Bolt itself that we are talking because it will be on, all, always uh, something uh, yeah of the base of, of the of the front end uh, uh, framework and also from from the how the things are done right so you could easily always uh, backport I mean 
uh, migrate your code. Uh, in, it will never be data, right? Uh, yeah. It will be code and custom things to the new way of doing things. And we we are very very conscious about, about that since the beginning. And in Bolter, we are uh, we have a quite extensive upgrade guide for every major version. So what should you do? These are the steps. Go here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the example. Uh, you have to move from here to there. Yeah. So so yeah. I mean, don't worry about that because it it will be quite quite easy. Uh, yeah. the, the upcoming upgrades in case that you want to abandon LTS and be on the bleeding edge of side of things and, and move forward with with yeah. the latest version of Bolt. Yeah. To, to get yeah, I to think there there is a very interesting discussion and uh, rather not discussion but experience uh, to be made in the next couple of years or in the last two years maybe uh, when it comes to how do, how do you model your uh, your websites your, your data? If do you use schema based content? How does that fit in with uh, the Volto blocks? And how do you mix these two? And how do you move data from one to another? So I think all companies who are working with Volto at the moment are uh, are trying to find the. Uh, how far you can go with blocks where you have a content type that's always a page or a document it's the technical term and you have a couple of blocks in there and how do you do how, how do you how do you query for them because there's obviously not a marker interface because it's just a couple of blocks and stuff like that so the the, the my my mind as a backend developer is always uh, struggling to find uh, to find traction on uh, how, how far should I go when I create a complex application like website with blocks and how far should I stay with structured data where a, a Python based schema is the better solution and it's going to be interesting how, how other companies, how all these companies that are working with Volto, how they solve these, uh, this, this, not, it's not a dilemma. It's, it's, it's obviously choices that you can make and you can move too fast in one direction or too, uh, uh, too far in the other direction and lose out on, uh, opportunities that you have. So I think that is super exciting to see. Also, the errors that people will make, and, and in two years' time, they say, "Ah, oh, we did this mega Uber block, like you said, like the, the kit concept Uber block is in iteration 35." I don't know, just joking, uh, but you did a lot of iterations on that, and it was we did try to do everything with that, and there was a dead end in the end, and so we do it different. So we're learning while we're going, and we're going uh, building really exciting and usable websites. So. For me, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. So another question, I think, uh, yeah, I'll blame just Philip for asking it. Are you already using uh, the Alpha 6 backend, Victor, in projects? The I the just six set alpha. it up today, <laughs> the first one, <laughs> to be honest. And with Peep, which, yeah, is a, is a kind of a fit in itself. <laughs> and I managed to, de to do that, uh, thanks, yeah, because I had Erico by my side. <laughs> <I> mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's no no real, uh, yeah, uh, uh, of, uh, fit on it, yeah, uh, to, to do that, but uh, yeah, uh, in the, our next projects, we're, we're going to jump right away to alpha, to the six alpha. Uh, yeah, we think that that's that's the right moment. Uh, we've been uh, conservative from now, we're using a 5.2 uh, uh, series, uh, but just because our project needed to, to have something stable uh, and and predictable to, to build on, right? Uh, but it, uh, that's, it's, f it's fun you saying we're being conservative because you not being conservative at all <laughs> in the front yeah. end part. You lose uh, using bleeding edge, writing your own blocks for your projects, and the back end is try to not touch too much. And it, that's the obvious uh, choice for all the projects. How many risks are you taking on different? How many new add-ons are you developing yourself? How, you, how many custom solutions are you doing for, for client requirements? For example, um, we, there was a time when Plonup Multilingual was super new. There was a, like a pre-alpha out and we tried, we, u we decided to use that in a project and also uh, use uh, Plonup content types, the first dexter iteration of dexterity content types Two risks. in version 0. <laughs> something. And the third risk we took was uh, we, we did the uh, Plon get paid. So that was the one that actually failed. The other two 
that worked really well. It took some work, but um, yeah. yeah. But obviously, I, 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 I don't think you can be blamed as being conservative just for when you're doing Volta sites, sticking with 5.2 for a couple of projects. That is... Don't, yeah, don't we, we had to choose, yourself. right? The, 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 um, how you're going to die. <laughs> exactly. Choose, right? And, and we, we chose to, to go uh, all in with the front end and have this, uh, the daring side on, on the front end. But at the same time, we said, yeah, you know, let's, let's, uh, we are, at the end, we are, have finite hands. And, and finite hours at the end of the day and let's, let's uh, only be daring in one side. And that's what we did the last, uh, the last year, right? And it, it went well, it apparently. But also, yeah. also with this separation, you can now say, look, some companies are daring on the front end, some companies are daring on the back end. And this is why Plan 6 will be so interesting because I thought last week, oh, we'll be photo, photo, photo. But we actually did a lot of Plan 6 back end. We did documentation work. There was this discussion on, on Plan Base uh, to be able to, because we have this challenge, okay, will, fault, will we uh, just skip server-side rendering in two or three or four years? But what's behind it actually is like, okay, we first have to, have to separate uh, the current server-side rendering in its own modules in the back-end system, and that means all kind of high, more, more in, uh, advanced developer concepts like uh, avoiding circular dependencies, moving uh, uh, moving things to, to a layer where you are sure that they're not imported again from, which was also some very advanced discussions uh, last week, which I listened in on and then thought, okay, interesting, interesting. <laughs> I'll go back to circling back to w where we were before with the dis how decisions are made, if you're listening to this and getting past key about server-side rendering don't um, there's no decision there's not even a proposal it's obviously a, a, a possible path forward for Plone uh, to uh, decide that this one front end is the only front end but uh, for example if you're a university or something like that uh, there's it's a LCS version there's going to be a, a lot of uh, stable years ahead for the classic front end uh, yep. let's move on because we're already over the one hour uh, wow thing. philip you're taking a cool i don't even have to say it anymore i was looking yeah, at the yeah. number like <laughs> exactly so but there so the, we talked a lot about sprints in general and this sprint and there are more sprints happening so what's the next sprint victor where will you go, be going next i'd love to go to the wushenshang sprint but unfortunately it's it's happening far too soon uh yeah maybe next year i don't know if we can uh, make it happen. Uh, but I think that, yeah, then summer is going to come fast. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there is, is going to be a documentation sprint uh, before the conference that has been some talks about it, but it will be great. That would we, be, uh, would be important that. probably. So yep. yeah, if that happens between uh, in summer or late summer, yeah, I don't know. It will be great also. At yeah. I don't know if, yeah. if online or, or or in person, but it will be great. Yeah. Uh, but, but the happen. first thing is happening actually this uh, in like three days from now on Saturday. Um, I yeah. will be going there. That's the Buschenschank Sprint in oh. Steiermark, which is in a region in Austria, at the uh, southeastern end on the border to Slovenia. Yeah. Uh, organized by Hannes Ragam, uh, and that's uh, mostly focusing on finishing Plone Classic, uh, but also uh, I will be continuing work on the relation front uh, um, um, endpoint, hopefully, and stuff like that. So a lot of people are going there. It's in an actual vineyard, so that's not a joke. There is a vineyard, and it's around the sprint location. And there's a fridge. It's uh, at the beginning of the sprint. It's uh, filled with wine and at the end of the sprint. Let's see how that goes. Um, yeah, that's, we, we that's visited. Really good. We visited breweries during sprints, but we didn't sprint in a brewery so far. But the Bushy Strong Sprint is actually sprinting in a vineyard. <laughs> vineyard, sorry, vineyard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And cool. there, the next sprint is uh, just at the end of the Buschenschank sprint is the uh, remote Plone Org renewal sprint. It's May 20th to 21st. And again, everyone can participate, uh, but it's an online sprint. And uh, so we're trying to continue work on the Plone Org front end and the back end. 
Um, Erico, if you're listening to this, uh, the front end thing is still super broken since uh, you work <laughs> at the uh, at the sprint in Bonn. But um, I know that you're super busy with stuff, so I, I hope that uh, we'll get to a stable s situation in May 20. And there is a sprint in Brazil, I learned, um, Cerrado Sprint. What's Cerrado? Does that mean anything to any one of you? Closed in Spanish. I mean, I, it's probably in Portuguese as well, right? Okay. Yeah, they want to do translation updates and also migrate because in, in, in Brazil, uh, a lot of governments, are, uh, agencies are using Plone in some uh, form and they also have developed a, a lot of specialized uh, add-ons for that. And they also want to, to move them uh, during May, uh, between May, 23rd, May 23 and May 25th. So that's also the upcoming, the upcoming sprints uh, uh, for the uh, for uh, for May in the date still. Yeah, some people will already travel Friday, I think, to to the Buschenstrang. So that's only in two or three days when it will go again. Yes. Okay. So I'm so excited for Plow Six. If you see all the work is happening, I mean, with the, with the, with the Beethoven sprint, there was a lot of plows uh, 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 back and stuff as well. With with Buschenstrang, there will also be a, a, a neat focus on the image handling. Uh, we're still uh, 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 discussing and seeing what we can get into Plow Six. Um, exciting times ahead. Definitely. And it's really, it's been exciting to have you, Victor. Uh, let's let's uh, finish up with your full name, F Victor Fernandez de Alba. And I have a question. Your 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 uh, nick on GitHub and uh, is is Snarydag with a GH at the end? Yeah. What's that? What? <laughs> it what was my was nick when I used to play uh, StarCraft, uh, which uh, yeah, and I ah. used to be. I mean, I. Uh, sometimes I say that I used to be or like to be a gamer, uh, but in fact it was not true. I mean, I, I mean that was a long time ago. Um, but in fact, I, I stopped playing StarCraft only two years ago. So, so it's yeah, it was kind of a hobby for me and, mm -hmm. and, and my cousin also. Uh, yeah, we had fun, and uh, but very ashamed because we were like in our forties and then playing against kids of uh, yeah, only God knows how how old they, they were. But yeah, it was my my gamer Nick uh, it used to be at least, and then it stayed. And by the way, it's not my full name. I mean, I I even have another surname, so it's uh, Victor Fernandez de Alba Encinas. <laughs> Uh -huh. Anthenas. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Even longer. And um, yeah. <laughs> to, 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 to sum that up, you, you are um, the, the mastermind of Volto, a, a longtime member of the uh, Plone uh, Foundation Board. I've ser I served with you for two or three years, and but you're still on. I've left that part of my life behind me, <laughs> at least for now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you work at Kit Concept, um, and... I don't know. Generally, uh, excellent person. Uh, thank you for joining <laughs> us during this uh, for this episode. Um, that was really fun to have someone else uh, here. Uh, Who's I, next? No, I'm not trying to uh, say <laughs> Fred isn't fun to talk with. That is always. Oh, great. I'll just. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm so sorry. No. We should do that again. Invite someone. That was great. Yeah. 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 yeah sure. So it was okay. A great experience. Nice. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you and for some, having me. And, and some nice advice in the end. I mean, if people in their forties, if you used to game, uh, uh, get back to it. I started gaming again uh, last two years because it's just wise as a person to to waste some time now and then. And <laughs> gaming is completely useless. And I was in the beginning of my forties. Well, I'm a grown-up person. I'm, I'm in my forties. I only need to do serious stuff. You'll get a burnout from that. So I'm I'm back into some online MMORG uh, for the last one and a half years, just having having fun now and then. Uh, uh, so StarCraft, excellent choice. Don't forget yeah. it, Victor. Just get back for it for once in uh, <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> great, will, great life advice. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, also for life for advice. In. <laughs> also tune in for us. Okay, and have a great uh, time. I'll talk to you next month uh, for the next episode of uh, the Plone Newsroom. Um, was great to have you all. Um, see you soon. Yes. Bye. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Bye. Philip. Thanks Bye, Victor. Bye. -bye. Bye.